In this video I want to show you how to write the program in Excel that calculates the future value of a lump sum and allows the user to put in the specific numbers that they want for their own problem and solves any problem with whatever numbers you have. So I have the initial deposit and I want that formatted in the accounting style. The interest rate I want that in percent so I'm going to go ahead and do that now with a couple of decimal places. The ending value I want it in the common style as, as well. So I'm going to put in the initial deposit let's call it a thousand dollars and the year is three the interest rate ten and then I'm going to have the ending value come out here well Excel needs to know where to look for this so when I'm running that program it needs to know exactly where to look so I'm going to name this sheet uh, you can name it anything I'm going to name it TVM for time value of money and I want to name the cells so this cell to name it I click in this name box and I'm going to call this uh, not current wealth but an abbreviation of current wealth C-U-R wealth so just type in there enter and here I'm limited to what I can name it if I try to name this year for years here's the problem that's a function in Excel so if I look year is something that actually is like average or sum it's one of those functions so I can't use that well, if I've named it year I don't want to go up here to the name box and try to change it go to formulas go to name manager click on year click on edit and let's name that YRS for years and that should be fine and then for interest rate again I can't name this rate because it's already a name in Excel but I can call it INT rate and you don't have to check all the functions you just hope that they're right and Excel will give you an error message if they're wrong and then my ending value I can name this and val Alright, so it's important that you remember what those are and you write them down. Of course, I'm not writing them down, so um, I may have to go back and check and see what those names are. Next, I need to go to the Developer tab. Well, there is no Developer tab up here. So if you don't see Developer, you go to File, go to Options, and under Options, there's Customize the Ribbon. And right here, you have Developer that's not checked, so you check it. OK. And here's Developer and here's Visual Basic so I can go back and forth to Visual Basic and let me get that sized correctly I can go back and forth to Visual Basic by pressing Alt F11 see where it says Alt F11 uh, or I can just click right here so now that I've clicked on this I go to insert a module and insert a procedure now different types of procedures we're going to deal with the subroutine today so it's for subroutine so I just give it a name I'm going to give it FUV um, or FV um, I'll call it this FUTVAL for future val I can't name it FV because that's the function in Excel for future value I click OK and this first line says to the program okay now we're going to start the last line says okay now we're finished so I'm going to put a lot of spaces in between here I'll go ahead and make this big so we can see it alright so step number one is I need to read in my three variables the first one is going to be I'm going to say CW for current wealth CW equals and it needs to know where to go find that value so worksheets is the command and note I'm not typing any capital letters worksheets open parenthesis quote and I named it TVM close quote close parenthesis period and range and same thing and that was named CUR wealth close quote and note what happens when I go with a down arrow key or enter either one down arrow key it recognizes worksheets and it capitalizes it and capitalizes the R and range so what this is telling Excel is look I want you to go to the worksheet named TVM which is this one find the cell name CUR wealth which is right there and CW shall be equal to that value I could call this current wealth I could call it CW this the name of the variable in the program does not have to match the cell name it's probably easier if you do that but I just want to do this this way so it demonstrates that you don't have to I also need the interest rate which I called INT rate that's equal to 
and now I don't have to put worksheets because it knows to look in the worksheet named TVM. So if I go over here, I can have multiple sheets, right? And how would it know which sheet to look for? Well, it needs that to look in this worksheet. And then range will tell me which cell to look in, and that cell is named INT rate. And again, look at the R in range when I hit return, it goes and capitalizes, which means I know what you mean by range. Cells tell me that. So if I misspell that and I hit enter, it doesn't capitalize. So that's why I like to do the lowercase, then hit enter, see their uppercase, and I feel like I've done that correctly. Then years is going to be equal to range years. And these are the inputs, and that, now Excel knows what the numbers in the problem actually are. It doesn't know what you're looking for, but knows what the pro numbers in the problem are. Now when I do a loop, I like to tab over, say for i equals 1 to uh, yrs. Because now yrs is now equal to 3. I hit enter or the down arrow key. Notice how that changed, and now the 4 and the 2 are blue. Excel recognizes, hey, that is a command. I know what you're talking about when you give me that command. Then tab over a couple, and even go down. I like to have tab over within uh, the loop, so I see what's going on in the loop. Now CW is equal to CW times 1 plus interest rate. And it spreads it out uh, the way it wants to, so you don't have to put those spaces in there. And then next, I go down, and now it has that loop. So this is the loop that we had in the video on paper. And now I need to have the output for that. So I want to have the output be right here, and that's named NVAL. So I say range, quote, NVAL. I didn't put the quote in there right. End Val. I didn't put that quote in there. Equals CW. Now I can't do that the other way around because the range in Val shall be equal to CW. If I did that the other way, CW would be equal to range in Val, and there's nothing in that cell, so that would be a zero. So I hit the play button right there, the run button. Come back over here. And the result is 1331, exactly what I thought it should be. I can change this number to 2000. I can run this again to run it. And note it didn't automatically change when I type that in. I go to the macros and I run. And that's correct. I mean, it should be double what it was. So now the program works. Let me show you a couple things for uh, if you make mistakes, what could happen. So if I have, for example, I didn't recognize that I left that out. It tells me, hey, there's something wrong. So I do this. And if I do something like um, y, for i equals 1 to n, n hasn't been defined, I run it, and it gives me, well, let me make this blank over here, it gives me at 2,000. Right, which isn't the right number because it assumed n was equal to 0 and didn't really run that loop. So if you're getting a result and not an error message, but the result's not right, make sure your loop is correct. And then this should be RS. Um, let me see if I have something different like this. I have that range misspelled. I didn't notice it. I run this. It says debug. I click debug and that lights up. There means there's something wrong with this. Okay, I figure out what that is. Um, and then I do this reset button and I can run it again and see that I have it fixed right. And maybe if I have something else wrong, let me see what else I can do that could be incorrect. Um, So it didn't like that. Notice I don't have, I have years KK, which is not correct, and it highlights that. So you can generally see where the mistake is because it highlights 
where your mistake was. Sometimes it will do it just by highlighting like this and sometimes it lights up in yellow. So that's basically it for the first uh, simple program.